imagine that um, you're on a planet that's about to self-destruct. Now, your only options are one, <clears throat> um, you can leave the planet through a through a spaceship, but your but your chances of um, arriving at your destination is very slim. Um, your second option is um, uh, you can use a you can use a um, teleportation machine to to leave the planet. Uh, the machine will create an exact copy of you um, with all your memories and your personality, and then um, it destroys the original copy. Now, which would you choose? Would you rather would you rather um, would you rather preserve your material body and your consciousness by leaving the planet to a spaceship, even if your chances are very slim, or would you rather um, preserve your consciousness for sure and have your material body destroyed um, through teleportation? Now here's a second thought experiment. Um, imagine that uh, you acquired a disease that that gradually rearranges your your neural networks until uh, eventually all their memories and your personality your consciousness will be completely altered now uh, the only cure is um, to have one of your brain cells replaced by a microchip the microchip will replace all the functions of the neuron um, <clears throat> from your perspective there will be no change now every year um, uh, a group of your neurons will be replaced by microchips until eventually um, your entire brain uh, will be composed of microchips. From your perspective, of course, nothing will have changed, but the composition of your brain is entirely different already. Would you rather um, keep your Would you rather keep your consciousness intact by undergoing the procedure um, at the cost of um, losing the material um, composition of your brain, or would you rather um, let the disease run its course and um, lose all the aspects of consciousness, all the aspects of your consciousness that make you you? Um, assuming that the main impetus for going with one choice over the other is to preserve the continuity of the self, um, or in other words, to not die. Um, what would be, what should be the, uh, where should I base the continuity of the self upon? Uh, should I base it on the continuity of the material body or on the continuity of the mind? Basing the continuity of the self on the continuity of the material body can be problematic since uh, we regenerate ourselves regularly. Um, the, the body I have right now is almost completely different from the from the body I had a year ago. Um, almost all our cells get replaced. Uh, even our brain cells uh, get replaced, albeit at a much albeit at a much slower rate. Should the continuity of the self be independent of the cells and be entirely uh, in the consciousness they produce? If you were able to reproduce um, a man's consciousness down to the most insignificant memory, um, would that reproduction still be the same person? Do you think there's such a thing as a seat of the self? Uh, if so, where is it? By self, I mean the perspective from which you see the world, <clears throat> which is different from the perspective from which you see the world. Um, what determines which perspective you're going to be aware of? Um, is that a property of the of the material composition of our brains? Um, if we if we regenerate our brain cells even just partly, what is the implication of that? If the cells that produce our consciousness die and get replaced even just partly, um, then it can be said that the coherence of an individual is held together by nothing more than his sense of self and um, his memories, and that uh, the material constitution of the brain. Um, wouldn't make any difference to the to these to the illusion of self that it creates. Still, the question begs to be asked: um, by not wanting to die, what is it that you're trying to preserve?